I am thrilled at the opportunity to finally play a match that is not in my bathroom. Griffin Newman versus Josh Horowitz, round number two in New York, in Brooklyn. Both New York gentlemen, both undefeated in the undercard. I've got pants. I still have pants that I own, so I can, I can put them on. Sure, why not? I want to get back out there. I want to get into the field. I want to be playing people. I R L. And I'm glad that the Schmodown is coming to us to let us both play home field advantage in the city that we know. If you have an opportunity to get to that match in Brooklyn on October 9th during Comic-Con weekend, get there at SchmodownLive.com. resurrect Frank Stallone from the grave, and he's not even dead. and the jerky mercs aren't going to know what hit them. Welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. We are at the Scum and Billy Cantina in Hollywood, California. I am Christian Harloff, joined by Mark Baby Carrots Ellis. And what a match we have tonight. It's a number one contender match. It is in the singles division. The winner goes to New York City. New York City, where they make the less than great salsa, but they have epic movie trivia matches. One of these gentlemen will get the luxury of competing in said match. You got Chance to Cobra Ellison today. You got JTE, which stands for something. One of them is going to go all the way to New York City. The other is going to be left with a pretty sour taste in their mouth because both of these fellows we know, Christian, they're top-notch movie trivia minds, but they're great competitors on top of them. They're both looking to do something that, uh, well, JTE challenged Mark Riley for the title back in 2016. He has not been back there in a bit. He's won the comeback player of the year before, and he's making a run to do it again. He has beaten every single time you put him up against somebody, whether it's Bibiani, McWeeny, and Adam Collins, JTE has pulled off a win. Chance Ellison has been such a dominant teams player, won the inner geekdom, but he always was going after that singles championship, never got himself to the number one contender match. He did it, and he did it by beating the former partner of JT, Jeff Snyder, to get here today. That's right. What do these gentlemen's heads look like? No one knows. They wear hats constantly. But for a closer look at some of their other at least pertaining to Schmodown moments, let's take a look at this epic promo. And your winner, ladies and gentlemen! Let's go! Wow, I thought it was going to stop. Woo! That's why he's not in the tournament, because he's going to win the belt. Chance Ellison will go on to play JTE. I have never been this close to a single title shot. I can almost taste it. This train cannot stop. I accept every challenge that comes in front of me. I have the track record. I have the confidence that I could beat any person in this league. Okay, one follow-up question. Do you know who sure. Chance Ellison is? Chance Ellison having a, an extraordinary run at the moment and getting himself to be right here where he is. <laughs> I've heard of him. I have heard of him. He, he um, may be on corruption, but we just yeah. beat corruption and we'll beat um, him again. You know, you think after my loss with Haas, I'd be a little apprehensive to get back in the ring with a, another exchange member. You'd be wrong. Congratulations. You TKO'd me today. Wait, I got JTE coming in the future to maybe face me in this bar right here. 
how about I return the favor? That lost the house and he wanted to destroy somebody. JT. Hi, I'm Josh the Engineer. You can call me JTE. JT me. <laughs> Chance is a singles and teams player, and he's got a lot of work to do ahead of him. So we're regrouping, we're refocusing, and we're moving on from this. You had your moment in the sun, you had a great run, and you had luck on your side when you beat Adam Collins. Some people might have been scared to play Collins. Some people might be scared to play some of these other teams I faced this year with Rushmore. But And unfortunately, I'll probably have to play somebody in my own faction for the belt because we have some of the best rookies in the whole league. I, I so <laughs> All you could see to talk about was going to New York and winning that belt. You overlooked me. I consider that an offense. I consider that a disrespect. The Schmodown has a ticket to New York City, and it's got Chance Ellison's name written all over it. Where do you put Chance if he beats JTE? You got to give the same service you give the Rachel Cushing. There's something impressive about having played for all three championships. I do think it's an impressive thing to have done. Just like Collins, I want to play, you know, some of the best players out there. And this is just another player who a lot of people respect. He's had, he's had a great year. My road ends at that belt. Your road ends tonight. And it ends with me. you see how much they want it you see obviously how much it means to both corruption because corruption in new york could potentially have marisol mckee versus chance ellison and that Ooh. is that is automatic points right away spicy i see some corruption shirts in our great studio audience today and obviously the fans would like to see that but in order to do that she's got to get past ethan Irwin, which we know what kind of run he's having right now but either way it's a possibility jte on the other hand no one thought JTE was going to have the run that he's having. JTE has looked dominant on his way back, whether he's been in teams with his team with Rushmore, whether it's doing what he's doing now in singles. This match is about as much of a toss-up as you can have in this run. I thought Giuliani got rid of corruption in New York City in the mid-90s, but we could have corruption either the faction or it could be the Finstock Exchange championed by Tom Dagnino, who himself is corrupt with a C. That's right, and you can see that match on this network. All right, here we go. Hey, Ladies look at you! That's what I did. Salesmanship. That's what I do. All right, so I ask you, my friend, are you ready? Oh, yeah, I showed up. I got it at least from the top, you know. Well, we'll see. I might be wearing shorts. You don't know. I don't. <laughs> I'll let them know. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia schmoda. rounds in the singles division. You can hear that music coming out in just a moment here. You'll know who's coming out first as this is an anticipated match in sort of a clandestine secret match. That's, that's the Kroger's music you can hear, and he has been fired up and determined ever since he entered the season. It sounds like all those minions in the end of Rise of Skywalker are chanting for Palpatine, except they're going crazy. So the queen of corruption and her competitor today in this match. And you know how, and there, and there is, as we see him coming, they're starting to walk through. Chance Ellison and Shannon Barney have such amazing chemistry between manager and competitor, and how much he trusts her, she trusts him. And this is their moment right here today. And there is Shannon Barney, the queen of corruption, walking out. And there is the Cobra, Chance Ellison. Big round of applause for Chance. Crowd loving him. It seems to be a pro-corruption so far. And these are the moments that Chance Ellison looks Introducing first, representing corruption with a record of six wins. Four defeats and two knockouts. He is the former two-time movie trivia showdown team champion of the world, the Cobra, Chance Ellison! Mixed. Mixed. I like that. It's like a mixed reaction from the crowd. Right. He looks like a scarier Rorschach from the Watchmen. He awaits his competitor, and we await the classic music of the Finstock Exchange. Is it classic? 
At this point, it might well, be. David B's pretty talented. There is the Finstock Exchange music. Will we see Finstock? No, we will not. <laughs> Finstock will not be here. He hears his own theme. I bet he shows up. Probably sure. But probably not. He probably, he's probably playing it in his car right now. I'll tell you that somewhere. But he will not be here today. JT will be managed by Moose Haas. Moose Haas. Moose Haas. And then he's going to be there is the, the music. managerial duties. Intimidating having your first managerial experience being a big, epic, big, big time. Match. But here they come, Mark. Here is, there is the Barbarian. Oh, he's walking him out. The Barbarian. And he's got, they're getting around for us. Ty Lieberman. Now Ty Lieberman. The Tyrant is here. Barbarian punched the wall. Barbarian with two masks on. Ty, and where is he? There he is. There is his opponent. With a record of 12 wins, 10 defeats, and one knockout, representing the Pinstock Exchange, he is the former movie trivia schmodown, please check it Loving both competitors it's here mixed. today. Not as many boos as we've heard, just luscious rounds of applause and cheers for these two great movie trivia minds. They both have their audience and they both have their haters. And here are the two competitors. Round number one, this match is worth four points for the faction. The winner will go to New York to face either Marisol McKee or Ethan Irwin. Round number one of the movie trivia showdown match works as thus. It is an in-studio match, so we do ask the two competitors to remove your hats. I'm kidding, you can keep them on for all three rounds. Question in round number one is each worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as we ask the question, you have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to well, a lot of folks. The audience, to both managers, to the camera, and also Christian and myself. Once we say correct or incorrect, we'll move on to the next question. Eight in total. If you get a perfect round, we ask you a bonus question. We'll get there should we have to cross that bridge. In the meantime, we'll remind each competitor of your three usages of the JTE rule, named for some guy. If you need a repeat, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge you may utilize at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring in managers, we'll deliver it to our heart's content, and it will ultimately be your manager that confirms and ratifies if said challenge is taking place. Christian, uh, you're gonna ask the question out of courtesy. I don't think you need to, but I know you like doing it. Have at it. JTE, are you ready? Let's rock. Chance Ellison, are you ready? Let's get it. Then let's get ready to show <laughs> Question number one from the realm of fantasy sci-fi. What 1990s sci-fi action film features the tagline, protecting the Earth from the scum of the universe? All right, I'm gonna give you any decade, yeah. and you tell me which decade you wanna watch the fantasy sci-fi movies from the most. 80s. That was a quick answer. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up please, JTE. Uh, Men in Black? Correct, and Chance. Men in Black. One, one. All right, your next category is animated movies drawn by hand or on a computer, some clay in there sometimes. Your question for a point. What year saw the release of the films Paranorman, Frankenweenie, and Wreck-It Ralph? Chance Ellison just might as well not even ask that question. Yeah, he seems mad that I asked it. He does? <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and Chance, we start with you. Excellent year for animation, 2012. Yes, sir. And JTE? Way off, 2006. Wow, all right, Chance Ellison, striking first blood. And Chance looks determined. Here we go, here is question three <laughs> from the 1980s. Who plays accountant Jonathan the Duke Mardukas in the film Midnight Run? Ah, see why they gave him that nickname. Yes, great right. movie. You know, I've never seen the whole thing. I'm sorry. Oh, you're a stupid I'm sorry. Person. I'm a bad person. Not good. Five, four. Uh, let's use a JT three. me. A JT me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays accountant Jonathan the Duke Mar Ducas in the film Midnight Run? That's JTE's first 
you know, we have two great managers here today, Moose Haas, Shannon Barney. Do we trust them that close to the beer taps? Uh, no. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up please. JTE, we start with you. Uh, Charles Gordon? Yes. Uh, Charles Gordon. Wait, let me see that again, JT. Oh, Gordon, Charles Gordon? That is incorrect. Charles Grodin. That is correct. Good catch by you. Those letters really taking shape with a name like Grodin versus Gordon. Your next question is the category of famous actors and actresses, big time people who have paparazzi follow them just like myself. Your question for a point. Which actor co-starred in the films The Last Boy Scout, Bulletproof, and Mo Money? So, so far right now, Chance Ellison seems to be in the zone. Locked in, but we see with JTE, he can take a punch and he can come back with an upper Every single time. Five, okay. four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up please, and we start with Chance. Damon Wayans. Yes, and yep. JTE. <laughs> Damon Wayne? Yes. There you go. All right. You got it. Both managers reminding their competitors to show the boards across the room. All right. Here's the next question. This is question five. Horror slash thriller. Which comedian starred in, wrote, and directed the 1991 dark comedy horror film Nothing But Trouble? Seems like a lot of work. Starring, writing, it's directing. No thank you. No, I'll thanks. take a nap. Uh-oh. Yeah, well, find out in No, it's not fine yet. Almost. Five, <laughs> four, three, three, two. JT me. Oh, second one Woo! for JT. All right. Hey, the, the first one. We give you three to use them. All right. Oh, Which no. comedian starred in, wrote, and directed the 1991 dark comedy horror film, Nothing But Trouble? That's JT's second. JT. On a scale of one to 10, how much did this movie influence your life? Uh, 0. 0.0. <laughs> and five, four, three, two, one. JTE? Uh, Dan Aykroyd? Yes, yeah. chance. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. All right, so JT coming back. <laughs> JT gets himself in one. Uses that second JT, but that time Woo. it helped him out. That's why we give him to you. Your next category is the world of comedies. <laughs> Bow down his film before a live studio audience. Sit, Ubu, sit. Your question for a point. Who plays Calvin Joyner, a former popular star athlete that went to high school with Dwayne Johnson's Bob Stone in the film Central Intelligence? Now, if you look, it's the, the first round. Has been getting a little tougher here for these competitors. No perfect round here for either JT or Chance Olsen. Awesome. Writer sitting just to our left. They're really enjoying this. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and chance. Kevin Hart. Yes, JT. Uh, Kevin Hart. Yes, correct. All right. So Chance Ellison at the moment uh, with a one point lead, five, four, five, four. Here is question seven. Romance, who plays the character of Mary alongside Donald Gleason, Tim Lake, in the film About Time? This is a Schmoe's No Reviewed film. It was. I believe I, it was positively reviewed. Not initially by me, and I went back and watched it and said it was a stupid review the first time. You're I usually five, wrong. Four, eight, that's true. Three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And JTE. Oh, would that be Rachel McAdams? Yes, and Chance. Rachel McAdams. All right, both get it. Six, five. Six, five. All Last right. question. Who wouldn't love a movie about a time-traveling closet? <laughs> Your next question is category of Westerns, and it is. John Ford directed John Wayne, James Stewart, and Lee Marvin in this 1962 Western film. Time travel devices. You have a DeLorean, you got a phone booth, yeah. and then these people are like, oh, let's do a closet. Like, what are we doing here? It's you know? a lot more convenient. Five, four. That's an excellent point. Three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and we start with Chance. High noon. That is incorrect, and JTE? Also had high noon. Uh, we're looking for the man who shot Liberty Valance. Wow, okay. So, 6-5 in this number one contender match so far. JTE misses two, excuse me, three, and uh, Chance Ellison 
Well, it misses two, so 6-5. Six, 6-5 five. Six, five at the moment, and now we go to round number two. It's time for the most beloved character in all the Schmodown, the wheel, the real, actual wheel. The wheel each competitor gets to spin at that thorough wheel once they settle on a category. Four questions that particular round will emerge. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing is available in round number two. Thievery, tomfoolery, all within the realm of play just for round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, you can ask us for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we think is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question recedes to one. JTE rules challenges still in effect. So it is a one point lead for Chance Ellison. Cobra, would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? I'll go first. All right, so Chance is gonna go first. He loves answering questions and he's ready to do so. All right, so now Chance Ellison will be spinning first and he will get a spin of the wheel. Chance, go ahead and give it a spin. All right, here it goes. Round and round, no Meryl Street. Very disappointing to the studio yeah. audience. But we do have Meg Ryan, who I would call one of America's sweethearts. Absolutely. So Chance Ellison, obviously, for our opponents and yeah. spinner's choice here. And uh, I'm going to go check my parking meter, and I will be back. <laughs> That's a big spin. And you just hope it lands on something he wants, Christian. We'll find out in a second. Here it is. All right, Chance Ellison will now take whatever the wheel settles on. And it looks like, oh. Oh, just missed. 90. So right. yeah, they're going to decide. They're going to talk about whether we all want to give away another 30 minutes of our life here. On the, the 90s. We're going to spin again. We're going to oh. spin again. Just maybe a slightly lighter touch this time. That'd be great. All nope. right. I don't, think he I, don't think he I don't think he really cares. I think whatever, whatever. So yeah. PJ's going to go get a pizza, and we'll be right back. Can I have a slice? Maybe. Round and round it goes, and you know, it reminds me of the time I was on my grandfather's farm, Christian. And back in those days, yeah. you, you had to handle chickens separate from turkeys. You they could, couldn't mix. You could tell me every year of your life before this wheel Two different hit. proteins. <laughs> so anyway, bottom line is we open an Arby's the next year. Well, here we go, and it's gonna be, uh-oh. It's still going. It is still going to Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks. The great Mel Brooks. All right, so Chance Ellison, is going to be up for Mel Brooks here. Chance, you get four questions. Here you go. First question. Who plays the young assistant Inga in 1974's Young Frankenstein? Five. Four. Read the question. First one. Who plays the young assistant Inga in 1974's Young Frankenstein. Not the choice. Is it A, Cloris Leachman, B, Madeline Kahn, C, Terry Garr, D, Anne Bancroft? Terry Garr. Yes, for one point. Just needed to hear the name again. All right, Chance. Which actor from the Alien franchise makes a cameo in Spaceballs, parroting their famous death scene in the series? John Hurt. Yes. Didn't blink on that one. In History of the World Part One, how many commandments did God give to Moses before Moses dropped some of the tablets and, sorry, some of the tablets and ended up with 10? I'm gonna read that again for you. In History of the World Part 1, how many commandments did God give to Moses before Moses dropped some of the tablets and ended up with 10? I bring you these 15, 10 commandments. What's your, what, is your, what is your answer? What is your answer? 15, 15. Correct. It's such a great joke. Correct. All right. All right, here you go. Final question. What musician plays the role of a sneeze? Robin's fellow inmate who helps him escape from captivity in Jerusalem in Robin Hood, Men in Tights. Isaac Hayes. Two more points. You All know, right. he needed multiple choice in that first one, Good. but from there he was running through that round like a hot knife through butter. He's got himself a eight point lead. It's 13-5. Ellison leads after that round. Only goes to multiple once. So now JTE will spin. And you can spin it very lightly if you want to. No pressure. <laughs> All right, let's do this. All right, JTE is here and here's the spin by Little Evil. All right, and uh, not yeah, to you either. Yeah. competitors playing well, not taking direction well early on. Hey, but who knows? You know, if you got, if you got your own style, then 
That's what it's going to be. Is your own style making everybody pay an extra hour no. for the babysitter? I'm going to sing uh, Bohemian Rhapsody right now. <laughs> hey, what do you see? Is it a little silhouette? <laughs> la, 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 la. I can hum it. <laughs> Thank you. You're that's, welcome. That's worth the price of admission for everyone alone. Yeah, it was. All right. All right. Welcome to Trivia and Humming with Christian. Yep. And now I'm going to... It's going to go around another three times. Yeah, well. <laughs> It's starting to settle. The wheel wants what it wants. Oh. It is new now releases. Released. New releases. You got 60 seconds to decide if you want it. And if you don't, we're going to watch Ben-Hur. So. <laughs> You're, re you're ready to get back. I'm ready to get you're back. You're ready to get back. He's in shape, folks. <laughs> All right, Moose and JTE having a constant. What are you gonna do? We're gonna run with it. There nice, goes. JTE <laughs> becoming quick favorite for me and you. <laughs> JTE is now going to answer four questions in the realm of new releases. Mark, what do you got? On behalf of everyone's time, JTE, thank you for taking new releases. For two points, your first question, you, you need me all choice. Which actress stars as Hunter Conrad? A woman that develops a dangerous addiction in the film Swallow. Oh, what's her name? Five, four, three. Oh, multiple. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Rosamund Pike, B, Haley Bennett, C, Emily Blunt, or D, Rebecca Ferguson? Uh, can I just get a repeat of the options? Yes, that's your one free repeat of the options. A, Rosamund Pike, B, Haley Bennett, C, Emily Blunt, or D, Rebecca Ferguson? B. B is correct for a point. <laughs> Starting off the same way Champ yeah. Ellison did his round. All right. Your yeah. next question for two points. Who plays Dr. Emil Harding in the film Bloodshot? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, Tyler Hecklin, B, Guy Pierce, C, Peter Gallagher, or D, Toby Kebbell? B, Guy Pierce. B, Guy Pierce is correct, and he is multiple choicing his way around this round, trying to keep pace with Ellison. Your third of four questions, as we call it the penultimate question in the category of new releases, Kate Walsh and Liam Neeson star in what 2020 film? Oh man, Liam Neeson. Five, four, three. <laughs> Multiple choice. Your <laughs> options for a point. Is it A, Made in Italy, B, The Marksman, C, Honest Thief, or D, Ordinary Love? Can I get a repeat of the Five. options? Uh, you last need one. to use the JTE. Uh, Three. Honest Thief. That is correct for a point. Yeah. He's taking low, high percentage shots. He's not scoring a lot of points, but he's getting correct answers, <laughs> avoiding steal opportunities for Ellison. It's currently a five point lead for Chance. JT can cut it to as little as three entering round three if he hits this last question in the world of new releases. Here it is. What 2021 film follows the characters Usnavi, Benny, Nina, and Vanessa over the course of a few days in their New York neighborhood? In the Heights. That is correct for two huge points. Eight points, he needed it. Now it's a much more manageable deficit that JTE trails Ellison by a three-point ball game heading into round three. We've seen JTE in this predicament more than 10 times. Uh, he has been in this so many times. Three points means nothing as we get into round number three, but Ellison does have a three-point lead, and that is a scary situation to be in because Chance is so accurate. That's right, I'm always accurate with this, the rules of round number three. We need some help from each competitor in the form of numbers. Each competitor is gonna give us a series of numbers. We need three from each of you. These numbers may range from one to 20. You may not pick the same integers as your opponent as each numeral corresponds to a unique category of Schmodown mystery. Your first question's worth two points. Your next question, three points. Your final question, should we make it that far, is worth five big points that could possibly affect who's booking flights where. So JTE trails by three, meaning it is Chance Ellison having the right to give us his three lucky numbers first from one to 20. What feels fortunate? 
Two, 12, 14. Two, 12, and 14 for the Cobra. And all evens. For JTE. 11, 13, 19. He went all odds, Christian. 11, 13, and 19. 19. 19, okay. All right, so Chance Ellison chose 2, 12, and 14. JTE chose 11, 13, and 19. We're going to start with JTE. Here is the first one, JTE category 11. JTE category 11. He chose Pixar. Pixar. All right, here is your two-point question, JTE. JTE, who provides the voice of Sully in Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University? John Goodman. Two points. <laughs> All right, he's within one of Chance's lead. He can take the lead out right if he hits his three-pointer. All right, so JTE, your second category was category 13. That's going to give him the world of the 1980s. 1980s. I think right. he was alive then. All right, JTE <laughs> for three points in the 1980s. Here it is. Morgan Freeman plays the character of Hoke Colburn in what Oscar-winning drama from the 80s? Five, four, three. JT me. Last one. Yep. Wait, isn't he out? Oh, no, no. no. Never mind. Yeah, no, no. Last one. no. Morgan Freeman plays the character Hoke Colburn in what Oscar-winning drama from the 1980s? Between two here. Five. I'm going to say Glory. Look for Driving Miss Daisy. Ah. Driving Miss Daisy. Driving Miss Daisy. So now all of a sudden, JTE <laughs> is faced with mortality. Five-pointer. If he hits it, he forces Chance Ellison and puts some pressure on his shoulders. If he misses it, it's a TKO win for Chance Ellison. More importantly, he is going to New York. All right, here we go. JTE, mm -hmm. for your five-point question. Yep. Category 19, animated. <laughs> here you go. What, two, what 2000s Disney films featured the songs Great Spirits, On My Way, and Look Through My Eyes? Five, four, Three, two. Tangled. And you're winner! Oh, 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 for all so long, Chance and Corruption, four points. He's been waiting to hear it, but Chance Ellison is the number one contender. And what a way to do it, a TKO over JTE. Got faced with some tough categories for him in round at number three. So that's the way the game goes as JTE and Chance attempt to exchange pleasantries after. He's now stealing Baby Yoda. He has stolen Grogu. Victory for corruption. That's four big points. This. Four big points. And now Chance Ellison is going to hope and pray that he sees Marisol McKee because if Marisol beats Ethan Irwin, it's an all corruption. That's an automatic either seven or eight points. That's right. what Shannon Barney's obviously rooting for. It's going to be a great matchup either way in New York. Might still have some tickets available at showdownlive.com. But for right now, we are going to toss it over to the great Jillian, and she is going to have an interview with both the winner and the loser right now. She's going to be celebrating with corruption. Ladies and gentlemen of the Scum and Villainy Cantina, I am here with your number one contender, Chance the Cobra Ellison. Chance, how did it feel to hear you are the winner? Oh, it feels great. It feels like this a long time coming. My first manager said, truth and destiny. Destiny's mine right now. And you've been after this singles belt for quite a long time, and I've got some news for you. You're going to New York to compete for that singles belt. That's got to be an amazing feeling. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Going back to the stage that made me great. Won my first singles match on that very stage. 
and I'm going up our singles belt on that stage. And Shannon Chance, we do have a chance of getting another corruption invitational in New York. There is a chance of having a chance versus Marisol McKee as for the singles championship. You have to be such an amazingly proud manager right now. I am beyond proud of these guys. I mean, what is better than a corruption invitational? Am I right? Don't answer that crowd. It's nothing. Nothing is better than a corruption invitational. And how do you feel about your gameplay today? I mean, a TKO. Uh, feel, you know what? I'm glad that uh, Haas wore that TKO shirt because I got to take that and I got to give it right back to you. How does that feel, buddy? How does that feel, Tom? Well, I'd ask Tom, but he doesn't care enough to be here. But how does that feel, all you players, your entourage that's in the audience tonight? Probably not good. As a matter of fact, I'd like to take a second to point out that if I can't end the season without at least one TKO, Neither can the exchange. We are the first faction to deliver the Finstock Exchange a TKO. Thank you very much. <laughs> Gotta love that attitude, Miss Shannon Barney. I mean, how does it feel to be back in front of a live audience? I, I have to ask. Oh, it feels great. The cheers, the booze, everything in between. I love y'all. I'm glad you got to be here to witness me stomp JT into the dirt. Ooh, corruption, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Chance Ellison, the new number one contender for that singles belt. Congratulations on this win. Can't wait to see you in New York. All right, thank you, Jill. And there's Chance Ellison. Obviously, Mark, he is very, very happy, as he should be. He's playing great this season. Even in his loss to Shazam in the championship, the way that he played in that speed round, he's locked in right now. And you could tell how focused he was. And you saw the way he celebrated when he lifted uh, Shannon up. And he was so excited that he won. He's going to New York. And he mentioned he had played Janine in that incredible match in New York for his first win. And now he has an opportunity to go back there and win the title. He knows the venue, he knows the catacombs, he knows how to play amongst throngs of adoring fans and hearing some booze along the way. But I also was struck by how confident corruption is, not just in chance, but how much the queen of corruption, Shannon Varney, believes in the entire faction, including Marisol McKee, right. who has a big task ahead of her. But again, she wins. Chance is already going to be in New York. Could be an all-corruption event. Well, there's a lot of people co counting corruption out, which was stupid, because they did the same thing that they did last year. They're moving up, up, up. You look at what... Uh, uh, Mike Kalinowski, you look at what uh, Corruption has done, the team, you look at what Chance is doing, you look at Marisol's doing, Adam Collins is going to uh, be in the tournament. So there's, you can't count them out, you just can't. But this is going to be such an incredible match. And for those people who are wondering, well, I don't know if I'm going to get a ticket, I don't know what the main event is, you have an opportunity to see Chance Ellison go f for the title against either Marisol McKee or Ethan Irwin. And in the undercard, you've got a round two matchup between Griffin Newman and Josh Harwitz. It's an event, the schmodownlive.com. You can get tickets. But JTE, he had a great run so far, and we look forward to yep. hearing from what he's going to say right now. And he's with Jill. JTE, fortunately, things didn't go your way today. What are your thoughts after this match? You know, I'm pretty proud. I did the best I could with the situation I was given. Uh, I even said in the third round there, I was between Glory and, of course, Driving Miss Daisy. That was a tough one. It's a 50 50 shot. I also knew the guy Pierce, but I wasn't 100%. The new releases was really tough for me because I would seen half of the movies. So two of those were guesses. Thank God I went to multiple choice. So I'm proud of my strategy there to actually try to get as many points as I can to keep him from getting the steals. <laughs> so do what I can. <laughs> now, new releases, that's, so some people say it's a very tough category. And I do think there's people in the audience that went, ooh, and you stuck with new releases. Mm -hmm. What was the thought process through keeping that slice? Uh, trying to stay away from some other <laughs> slices. Uh, pretty much I said going in, if I, as long as I don't get a certain slice on there, I'm sticking with it because it, there could be some deep cuts in some of those. I feel like new releases, I stay up to date with movies pretty well. The first film, I Swallow, I actually saw. Just couldn't remember the actor's name, so I needed the multiple choice to hear it. It was tough. It was a tough category, tough spin, but at the end of the day, I'm just happy I got myself in the position to at least bring him to his five, but I couldn't quite get there. It all came down to glory and Dry Miss Daisy. I will remember every Morgan Freeman name going forward for the rest of my life. <laughs> now, uh, Haas, we did hear Chance uh, make a comment on that shirt you're wearing. Um, do you have anything to say in response to that? Our faction sells merchandise. It's simple. Well, that's a very solid answer. Now, speaking of corruption, JT, um, we did notice that it doesn't look like didn't look like Chance shook your hand after that match. Um, what are your what are your thoughts on that? 
uh, you know, I did it as a sign of respect. Uh, he showed no respect. Uh, and I hope to play him again one day so I could do the same thing right back to him. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, sorry that it did go your AJTE, but you know that we love seeing you compete, don't we, guys? Gotta love JTE. And I'm sure we'll see you again soon. All right. Well, you see that, look, the Finstock Exchange never lacks for confidence, even no. in a loss. And Jillian did such a great job at Jillian Marie on Twitter in person interviewing them and just trying to sift through the, the emotions of a match like that. But JTE never seems like he loses himself in a match. He never seems to get too down on himself. He just knows he didn't get the right questions and he has every bit of confidence he can bounce right back. It's experience. I mean, the guy has been in a lot of high profile matches and you never can count him out because Oh, well, well, he lost a chance, but yeah, but then he can go and beat someone like Adam Collins like that. He can go and he can, you put him up against Dan Merle and, and everyone, Dan will win. Don't say that when JTE plays because JTE can beat anyone in this league. Today, though, Chance was locked in, Chance got the questions, and Chance is the number one contender. Chance is your number one contender, and that's how it shakes out here at Scum and Villainy Cantina Woo! right in Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard. Special thanks to everybody at Scum and Villainy for hooking us up and our great crew for having such a cool setup here. And most importantly, Gollum. He's right over there, just keeping watch over all of us and our precious studio audience. They were great today. All right, the SchmodownLive.com is where you can get tickets to New York on October 9th. You're going to be there for New York Comic Con. We'll be there on Saturday night and on the night before. Me and this character are going to be doing stand-up at the New York Comedy Club. Come check us out over there. Look at this guy. I'll be actually there Thursday and Friday. Thursday he and might, Friday. He might show up. Well, we'll see. You never know. With this guy, he's mercurial. And we are almost sold out at the Schmodown Spectacular. If you're thinking about it, you're on the fence, get those tickets today. Where it do I have to fly December to? December 4th. You can just roll out of bed and probably hit those. Oh, it's, the oh that's the one in downtown LA. That's December right. 4th, the Globe Theater. is such a great venue. We look forward to seeing your smiling faces there for the Schmodown Spectacular and the Expo beforehand. Well, thank you guys guys so very much for joining us today our great crowd here today our crew everybody involved we'll see you very soon from mark ellis i'm christian harloff see you next time